welcome to Massive Late Fee. And now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my spooky fiance, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a good week here. It's October 31st. 1998. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. In, in honor of Halloween, we have a, a very spooky movie we watched. <laughs> I don't know if spooky is the best term, but it's definitely a little scary. It stars the greatest zombie of all time, Adolf Hitler. The fuck? You just can't keep him down. Okay. Um. No, we, uh, we've, I'm foregoing the news this week. There's not... There's not a lot in the news this week, so we're not going to uh, we're not going to cover anything news wise this week. We're probably just going to jump right into the uh, the movie, unless you've got something, Carol. I have one thing. Oh, does Carol have something? Because we got we got a, an email from a uh, from a person. Take a letter, person. I hesitate address to be like we got the, it from a fan because like that's weird. But address it to the show. <laughs> Um, it says, Hey, what's up? Yeah. Hey, Mark and Carol. I love the show so much. You two are the best. I haven't heard anything else that breaks down movies as well as you. And the two of you are so funny. I've never written into a show before, but I had to tell you how awesome you are. There are no other shows for you to write into. Sure there are. (laughs) Wow. No, we did talk to uh, somebody. Remember? What are you talking about? We talked to, uh, we talked to, uh, that, the, that one group of people that also was making tapes. The ladies? Yeah, breaking down movies. Yeah. They had a cooler cooler setup than we did. So I that. And I invested in some posters. There's a couple of them. <laughs> um, but she said, I even started watching Dawson's Creek because of you. Oh, wow. Thank you for the great shows and keep it up. We'll accept those royalty checks now, Kevin Williamson. <laughs> right? Well, thank converting you. Converting more people to you. Thank you so much. That was, like, awesome. It's always great to hear from people. It makes us feel like we're not just wasting our time. It does. It does. Thank you. Thank you. What was her name? I didn't want to say, but Sarah. Okay. I'll just say Sarah. Yeah, first name is fine. (laughs) Thank you, Sarah. This is Sarah's address. (laughs) Right. Here's her email address. Phone number. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, uh, Sarah's generic enough, right? Yeah. I guess if somebody wrote in and their name was, like... Winona. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Shanene. Clydesdale is what I was going to say. <laughs> Clydesdale. Yeah, okay. Shanene sure. is a good one, yeah. Uh, then I guess maybe we wouldn't say their name, but. Yeah. Sarah's. There's a lot of Sarah's out there. But we appreciate you, Sarah. Is Sarah's an H or no H? <laughs> I'm going to keep that under my hat. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's a, <laughs> could even be S E R A. Sure. Could be like uh, like the Sarah Paladins from uh, Magic: The Gathering. <laughs> You're so weird. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of Magic: The Gathering, I'll bet you some of the people in the high school depicted in this movie play Magic: The Gathering, but not the stars of the movie. No, definitely not. Definitely not the stars of the movie. I can't imagine Edward Norton playing uh, Magic: The Gathering, but I can imagine Edward Furlong playing. Magic the other. Yeah, I think that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> you mean Magic the Gathering? No, I mean, I feel like we're supposed to feel like Edward Furlong's character is a little dorkier than uh, Edward Norton's character. I guess. But, I mean, he's not really dorky either. It's John Connor, everyone. Yeah. It's John Connor from Terminator 2. It's wow. the little kid John Connor. I didn't really make that connection. Like, I knew he looked familiar, but... Yeah. He plays Danny, or... Derek or Danny generic white man's name. No, he's Danny. He's and Danny and his brother is another name. Derek. I thought. Is that what it is? Derek and Danny? I think so. I, I, I mentioned both names. I'm now I'm not sure. Like I thought of the two most generic white names I could think of <laughs> and they happened to be correct. Were you just pulling them out of your ass? Yeah. I mean I've seen the movie, so I must have been there subconsciously. But like I remembered one of their names started with a D. Sure. And so I I just went with that. You were absolutely right, though. I'm, I'm sure it's Derek and Danny. You were right. Wow. So that's kind of crazy. So Eddie Norton is uh, Derek. <laughs> 
Edward Norton. He's been in a lot of things. Like and Edison Furlong is Danny. Yeah. Wait, what? He's been in a lot of things. He's yeah. been in that. Uh, I, I didn't kill anybody, but guess what? I did. A movie. <laughs> Spoilers for that movie. What was it called Primal Fear? This was Richard Gere was his lawyer. Yeah. And he was like, I didn't kill anybody. And I was like, at the end of the movie, he's like, yeah, I guess what I did kill. Oh, you know what it is? I'm confusing him with Ethan Hawke. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he was in that movie. He was in some other movies too. I'm not. I'm sure he was in other stuff. I just can't think but of anything. He else. wasn't in Gattaca. That was Ethan Hawke. No, he wasn't in Gattaca. But sometimes, like I don't know, he 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 reminded me of him a little bit. Of Ethan Hawke? Yeah, I guess. I, don't know. I mean, the way real life Ethan Hawke is a white supremacist. <laughs> is he? That's no. That's a joke. <laughs> Oh, goodness. That's a joke. Ethan Hawke is a nice guy. I met him once. You did? I did. Really? Yeah, I did. We, we, I met him once at an airport. Why? <laughs> I want what more details. What do you mean, why? <laughs> I want details. <laughs> why would you meet him? Oh, my sister met Andre the Giant on an airplane. Really? They were both going to Paris. So oh, he's from he's, he was, he's from Paris. Yeah. Andre the Giant. Oh, I'm French. See how there were details there? <laughs> I met him at an airport outside of a Svabaro. There you go. Or however you pronounce that. So you both wanted the pizza. He that folded made, a pizza sense. in front of me and said, I am Ethan Hawke and I am not a white supremacist. <laughs> so have... if you ever make that joke on your very successful show that I listen to, <laughs> then that will be hilarious because it's so opposite of who I am in real life. And then he pulled out a picture of Martin Luther King that he keeps on him at all times. <laughs> God. Is that enough details for you? Yes, thank you. I had Sabaro yesterday. Did you? It was a little disappointing. Yeah. Like it the, often is. The 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 slice was okay. Like it had the the slice. The, it added the, the slice, but you don't like the you don't like the crust. Yeah, it had the perfect like grease ratio where it was like dripping down my hand while I was eating it. That that's what you want. Oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, their their crust really leaves something to be desired. Yeah, yes. It and does. then there was a breadstick, and it was like three days old. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck Sabaros. Yeah, That's suck. all I gotta say. Not a fan. No. You know what I like better than Sabaros? What? Uh, Everything else. Jets pizza. Jets is good. That's Detroit pizza, people. That's Detroit style pizza. I don't think there's Jets outside of Michigan. I doubt it. If you come to Michigan, though, I mean, you can try Jets. That's good, too. But uh, I think Buddy's Pizza is a must. Buddy's is really, really good. That's the, like, original Detroit-style pizza. If you don't know what Detroit-style pizza is, they basically make it in a, a pan, like a, uh, like a, what do you call those metal pans? They're like... it's a, I don't know what the pans are called, but they call the pizza deep dish. Yeah. But the, the you, everyone's got those, little, they're like cookie sheets, but they have tall sides. Yeah. Everyone's got a pan like that at home. Uh, and then you just put the, you, you put a lot of grease in the bottom of it so it doesn't, so it doesn't burn, but also so it soaks up all that delicious grease. Mm-hmm. And then you, uh, you put the dough in the bottom and you put all the toppings on the top. And what ends up happening is it like, it deep fries almost the bottom of the dough. And, you know, everything gets, like, really crispy and delicious. It is. It is crispy and delicious. But what wasn't crispy and delicious was uh, the victim stuff <laughs> of Edward Norton in this movie. <laughs> is this just going to be a series of us starting to talk about the movie and then getting derailed immediately? I feel like part of me is just trying to avoid it because I don't want to. You don't want to talk about it? I mean, I do. It was a really good and interesting movie. It's just, it's also, like, sad. It's Yeah, it's kind of sad. Yeah. And we're going to have to talk about that stuff, too. And we're going to have to talk about politics. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> There's so, a lot of politics in this movie. So, okay. So, this movie starts out... American History X. It gets a little confusing, maybe, here and there, I guess, because it's, like, not exactly in order. It's a Tarantino-style, non-linear narrative. It's not Tarantino-style. No, it, it, the it movie's not Tarantino-style, but it is it is it is a non-linear narrative. There is a continuous, like, in-order story Rashomon being... or whatever. What? What? 
There's a continuous in order story being told with flashbacks to previous events. Yeah, I guess that's true. So there's a story of uh, Danny. It's one day. Yeah, Edward Furlong. Yeah. Who, well, it's, it's two days, really. Well, okay. It's a 24 hour period. It's about, yeah, it's about 24 hours. Um, but yeah, there's a story of him writing this paper about his brother and then flashbacks to his brother's life, even things he couldn't possibly have been there for. Uh, and then, um, and then the next day. But his brother tells him that stuff. I guess. Like the stuff. So you tell him how he's fucking, uh, raped? Yeah. Fem, fem, no, 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 no. Oh, oh he's fucking fr- <laughs> Faruka Salt or whatever her name is the the, the chick from the his craft. brother was there for that if you recall his brother he wasn't walked in sitting in the corner no and I mean, everyone in the house including the baby was aware of what was going on in that room that's true that was so awful that's so Beverly rude D- Beverly <laughs> Beverly D'Angelo is just letting that happen the mom yeah yeah I'm like what she's a terrible mother yeah and then you know it sucks like I thought his father was going to be Clark Griswold which would have been the best but is that uh like the National uh, Lampoon's vacation. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, how do you want to go? First of all, what did you think of the movie? I love this movie. It's very good. It's a very good movie. I kind of want to watch it again, even though it's super sad. It's strong. It's powerful. Yeah. But I, I do have a couple issues with yeah, it. Yeah, so let's talk about it. So, it starts out with Danny in the principal's office... Because well, he's not in the principal's office. He's for some reason talking to. I think that actor's name is uh, Andre Brower, something, something like that. He's been in some other things, but he's the English teacher. No, the English teacher is in the principal's office with him. The three of them are having a conversation. Did he's- he just get promoted then? Because when we flash back and uh, Edward Norton is talking about him. He's like, we got a new English professor today. We're we're reading this book that he has assigned to us. He's super smart. Yeah. He has a double PhD or whatever. That was several years before. Okay, so, so he got he got promoted. Yeah. Okay. So, but it starts in the principal's office. Yeah, he's in the principal's because office. Because the teacher is upset. Elliot Gould. Show he, some, some respect to 1970s hottest actor, Elliot Gould. Okay, Ross's dad on Friends. That's true, um, he is. But... He's very upset. Monica. I can't do his name. I can't do his voice. What, what do we think, Monica? I can't do it. Fuck. Go okay. Ahead. Anyway, he's yeah. upset because this child wrote a uh, paper up on Mein Comp. Mein, Mein Comp. Mein Comp. What does um, that mean? You, you can't even pronounce it. I guarantee you don't know what it means in German. You're so mean to me. <laughs> well, like, you can't even pronounce it. What does it's it mean? Mein Kampf. Do you know what it means? My country. My struggle. <laughs> you're so close. <laughs> I was so hoping I would just get <laughs> I it. Know you're <laughs> My struggle. Okay. Adolf Hitler wrote it when he was in prison. Right. And the principal says to the teacher that he brought this on himself because he told them to pick one uh what what one leader for Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but what, what was, I don't remember something influential, some kind of a cultural movement though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Civil rights movement. Civil rights. Civil rights. Yeah. Any civil rights leader that they wanted. The civil rights of uh, all white people dominating and killing all the races. Yeah. So that's what uh, Danny chose to do. Spoiler alert, everyone. Race doesn't exist, by the way. We just made it up. (laughs) But, um, and this teacher, you know, he's Jewish, so it's like even worse. And apparently he used to date the mom. We find that out in the scene. It's even worse because he's Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is worse. Because it is. You know, you're right. You're right. It's bad to have Jewish teachers. You're right. No. It's worse. He shouldn't be Jewish. He should be ostracized. I'm just saying. Don't I'm you, taking your words the wrong way. Don't you think that it was a personal slight to the teacher that he did that? Yes. I think he did it on purpose. I mean, I obviously did it on purpose, but I think he, yes. I think he intentionally did it in this teacher's class to piss off this teacher specifically. And the principal because knows. Because of other things that we find out later. Yeah, because the principal's like, no, you hate this child, and I know why <laughs> he actually says it. Which mm-hmm. I think that's fucked. Because later we do see what happens when this teacher is dating uh, Danny's mom. 
And Danny didn't do anything to piss this teacher off at the time. No. And Elliot Gould is wrong. Like, so to get political a little bit, sorry to get political, everyone, but we, we can't help it with this movie. There are, they're portraying uh, white nationalism as like, uh, or like Nazism, neo Nazism, mm-hmm. as like an extreme right wing philosophy, which it is. The fascism is right wing taken to the extreme, the same way that communism is left wing taken to the extreme. Okay. Um, and Elliot Gould represents the liberal movement, and the sister does in a certain way too. And I think the movie kind of goes out of its way to say, like, obviously this right-wing uh, fascism and shit like that is wrong. But this the this liberal dude, classical liberal guy or whatever, is also wrong. Okay, what did he say that was wrong? I don't remember. Well, he first of all, he gives up. Uh, oh, you he, mean how he handled the situation? How he, how he handles both situations. Because the teachers, the principals, like... No, I think we can... He learned this. He learned this racism. He learned this prejudice. He can unlearn it. We can teach him other things. We can make him better. That's our job here. Mm-hmm. And the teacher's like, nah, fuck him. He's, he's, he's a fucking lost cause. Yeah. You know, he wants to give up on him. Just the same way that he gave up in the situation. So they, they flash back later in the movie to when he's having dinner with... The mom, because uh, he's dated, he's gone on a couple dates with Beverly D'Angelo and all of her children. Yeah, whose husband, whose husband was killed. Mm-hmm. Her husband was a firefighter and was killed, and that I guess that was supposed to kind of spring his racism. Well, no, I mean the the racism was there. Yeah, we'll get to that yeah. in a minute because I have things to say about that yeah. too. Um, but uh, so Elliot Gould's there, and they're talking about the Rodney King, the Rodney King incident where the L.A. police beat the shit out of him and everything. And both sides are kind of making s- sort of valid arguments. Yeah. Uh, it's the arguments we all heard in 1992 when this happened, mm-hmm. w- where it's, you know, Rodney King was high as shit and driving really fast, and he hit one of the police officers, um, and none of that was caught on tape. And it's like, that's... Not good that he was on drugs. It's not good. And I I remember hearing at the time, like, you don't know what kind of strength those people have when they're on these kind of drugs and and shit like that and everything. And I don't know all the drugs that he was on. I know they tested him. I remember there there were drugs he was on. I don't remember what they were. So, like... If it was, like, PCP, then... And and I don't think it was. I don't think it was, and I think that's what what they're getting it from or whatever. But anyway, bad stuff, right? But... We see the video of three cops surrounding him, beating the fuck out of him. And I'm sorry, but the the LAPD has brought this on themselves with their, I don't know, 30 plus years of abusive practices towards black people. So obviously when we see that, we're like, oh, that's the LAPD being the LAPD. No one's surprised by it. So it's the two arguments of that's excessive force. Mm -hmm. And who are you going to tell? These police had to do their job. They put their lives on the line. This guy was high. This guy was driving 55 miles per hour over the speed limit or whatever, um, endangering the lives of all people around him and high as hell. Like, So there are some valid-ish arguments, I guess, on both sides, whatever way you want to take this. Um, but they're having a animated and not super heated, but like... You know, kind of like they're having a lively discussion. Right. And the mom just kind of wants it to stop. And I don't remember exactly. How does it fucking just spiral out of control? Because it becomes chaos. Um, Well, part of it, I think, is because the mom tried to get it to stop. They escalated Mm -hmm. because they were like going to stop. And then all of a sudden they just got right back to it. But that's that was it was after that point when Edward Norton just started like like going off like but, but how do we get to that part that's what i want to know like how do we get to that because i i think yeah i guess he just kind of escalates yeah because she tells him to stop and then he's like he says something about jewish or yeah. hitler or something like that and like and then uh, the gloves come off <laughs> elliot elliot gould says something and he just kind of like 
Edward Norton's just sitting at him like half smiling because mm-hmm. he knows exactly like what he's saying and he knows he knows exactly how to push this guy's buttons. And then yeah, then he starts escalating. His sister starts. That's what it was. His sister is start like gets into it and everything. And then the the girl from the craft, his girlfriend. Oh yeah, she's there too. She's a bitch. Is um she starts talking too about. Like Hitler and shit like that, and he was disrespectful to his girlfriend, or he wasn't listening to her. That was like no, no not him. The sister, the, the sister, sister was like, "I'm, I'm gonna leave if we're gonna be, if we're gonna get into this shit. I don't want to hear this shit anymore." And because I hear it all the time, and she gets up to leave, and he's like, "No, we listen to you. You fucking sit down and listen to her." And she wants to go, and he's like, "You know, whatever." And then he grabs her by the hair and like is like being physically abusive to her and everything. He pushes Danny down. And the Elliot Gould the whole time, first of all, doesn't do shit. He stands up and he's like, "What are you doing, Derek? You're hurting her." Like, well, no, he's like, sister. "You can't." Br- she can't breathe. He was fucking. He grabbed a handful of food and was just shoving it in her face. Like yeah. she could. He could have killed her. Like he yeah, was like acting he was, like, like a fucking Freddy, maniac. Like he was Freddy Krueger in Part Four. <laughs> right. It's force feeding her. It was. It was really freaky. Like no, it and was. It, it, it was happened bad quick and very violent. Yes. Yeah. It happened really quick, and I don't remember though if he went off on the teacher before he got violent or after he got violent. I think it was after he got violent. There, he said some things. He said some very. He was getting more personal before he got violent. After he got violent, Elliot Gould's like, well, you know, stop it, and he's like, uh, that's when he was like, you don't think I know what the fuck you're doing. You, you know, you think I'm ever going to let a fucking Jew like you fuck my mom and, like, you know, you're fucking ethnically unpure or whatever. Like, he's just spouting Hitler shit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. The teacher is a pussy, and he... And, and, what, and what does he do? He leaves. He's like, you know, he doesn't try to stop him from physically abusing these women. And then he leaves. He's like, fine. He gives up. He's like, I'm not going to fight for this relationship. Fuck this. I'm out. I don't have time for this. And Beverly D'Angelo comes out, and she's like, I'm sorry, you know, and everything. She's apologetic. You know, she's trying to mend fences. And he's like, I can't, or whatever, and just fucking drives away. Yeah. And that's it. He just distanced himself from her. So he gives up. He wants to give up on the kid. He gives up on the relationship. He gives up on making anything better. Yeah, he just doesn't want to deal with it. He, I and don't, that's, I think, I think, I think that's, I think the criticism against liberals that this movie is talking about is like, they don't actually want to make things better. They say they do and they, you know, they act like they do, but they don't really, because they don't make any moves to try to make things better. But the principal's a liberal and he does. The principal is, I see, I don't, I don't look at the principal and say like, oh, he's, he's a liberal. I look at the principal and say like, he, he's the, the, the like voice of morality. Like he's. I think he's above the politics of this movie. I think. I don't understand his character. Okay. Like, I don't understand why he has as much power as he has. He's oh, you mean like he's got, the, he's got the cops on fucking call? Like, the right. cops are listening to him like yeah. he's the lead detective? He's visiting him in prison, like, like yeah. in the fucking medic area. Yeah, it is a little weird. It's like, I was wondering, did I, like, fall asleep for a minute? Did I miss some explanation of how this man is so intertwined with the police? Oh, you didn't know? He's Batman. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it either. It's a little weird. But, yeah, he's, he's suddenly, like... He's got, he has a fucking, a, a police officer in tow with him at one point. And he's just like, yeah, you know, uh, like, uh, he tells, telling the police officer what to do and everything. It's fucking weird. Yeah. It seems like he has two jobs and we just don't know what the other job is. Right. He's working deep undercover at the school. I suppose like he, I don't know. He knows a lot about the story. He knows a lot about the, the head Nazi guy that's, re- that is recruited, Edward Norton, he knows a lot about the situation. I, I don't know. Like, it's weird. It is weird. It's it's odd. But he's he's obviously he has like two PhDs. He's obviously very intelligent. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's made inroads with the police. It seems like. I mean, it's not a small town though. It's L.A. Right. Like this takes place in Los Angeles. Yeah. So I mean, that was one of my one of the two criticisms I have about the movie. Oh, is what's that your other the criticism? Principal- it's, well, I mean, I guess, you know, spoilers, go watch the movie. Um, yeah, if you haven't watched the movie, go watch it. They didn't have to fucking kill Danny. 
And if they were going to kill Danny, they should have had one of the fucking neo-Nazis kill him, not a black dude. Well, that's something I have to say, too. So, like, the end, I guess we'll talk about it now. The end of the movie comes, and it's like he antagonizes some black kid uh, earlier in the movie who's bullying another white kid. Mm -hmm. And so the black kid comes the next day with a gun and shoots him. And I was like, oh, so so black people are bad? Right. Like, like why did the movie do all this <laughs> and then be like, at the end, oh, well, guess what? You were right. I mean, like, and, what and the like, fuck? And, and, you know, spoilers, I guess, kind of. So the main plot of the movie or the main arc for Derek Edward Norton's character is he's, he's super racist. He goes to prison, becomes unracist. And then his brother's killed by a black guy. Is he just going to become racist again? Right? Like, this was a very precarious thing. Like, <laughs> how did... Like, what happens after the movie? Is well, he just a Nazi again? Well, but no, I don't think so, because when he's holding him and crying and stuff, he's like, what did I do? What did I do? Like, he blamed himself. Yeah. Because he knows that this is a result of his brother acting the way he acted and everything. And so... <laughs> It it confused. I I think you're right. I think it would have been better if it was one of the neo if it was one of the neo Nazis that killed him. It confuses the message mm-hmm. as to like what what is the movie trying to say? Yeah, and who are the bad guys? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think that this movie's smart enough to where it's like there are no. It's saying there are no good guys and bad guys. Really, I mean, I mean, obviously the the neo Nazis are bad guys, but like. That it's all, you know, it's all a mission. Nobody's mishmash. perfect. Basically, yeah. But it's like, yeah, that that was confusing. Ending the movie that way was confusing. Killing his brother, okay, sure. I get that kind of as like, uh, this is a cycle of violence, and you have been a part of this cycle of violence, and you're responsible for his death in a way because of the perpetuation of this cycle of violence. And I think that's why he's saying, like, what did I do and everything? Like, at the end of the movie, I think that's kind of selling that point. But, like, yeah, it just, it muddles it. It's like, oh, you know, like, I don't know. It just, it really muddles it. It it leaves a bad taste in my mouth that a black kid killed him. You know what, though? I'm kind of remembering that I heard somewhere that it's loosely based on a real person, so maybe it really happened, and maybe that's why it had to happen that way. Maybe. I don't know. I'd never heard that. Yeah. Yeah, and I should have, like, written that down so I could tell you who, but I did see that it had been based yeah. loosely on a real person. So. Well, you know, we could we can pause. <clears throat> you can go to the drive to the library. We'll just wait. <laughs> It'll be instantaneous for them. Okay. I'll, I'll sit here motionless while you do it. Sure. Um, But, no, I, uh, I, I really didn't. I didn't I didn't love the ending not only because of of that but because of like I said just kind of how it muddles the whole message I think. Okay, you go to the library. So we're it, back everyone. <laughs> it's, so it says that um American History X is loosely inspired by me inks M E E I N K S life in many ways. The film's character Edward Norton Becomes a skinhead after his father's killed. So that part's based on this guy, Frank Mink. Mink. Minkins. So that's it. Okay. Doesn't say anything about his brother being killed, though. All right. Well, yeah. who knows? <laughs> but yeah, like, you're, we're meant to believe at the beginning that, or at some point in the movie, that his father's death at the hands of. I don't know, a drug dealer, I guess, in fighting a fire where, you know, at a drug den or something like that is like, that's what makes him a racist. But then we get like one last flashback to uh, um, Corey's dad from Boy Meets World (laughs) saying some racist shit. Well, it's like, Mr. Matthews, what are you doing? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, he's supposed to be. A uh, fireman, and mm-hmm. like you always think the firemen are the good hero people, right? Right. But he's not as overtly racist as his son. There's not well, as much venom and vitriol behind the words he's saying. He's not part of a neo-Nazi organization, right? That's for sure. Um, 
But he does say they're talking about the books of the native son and stuff like that that he's mm-hmm. reading and everything. And I, Edward Norton's obviously very, very intelligent. Um, and he's talking about the books that Andre Brower is, you know, whatever. And he's like, um, yeah, you know, like fucking reading about that shit. Like, that's that's bullshit or whatever and everything. He's like, it's all bullshit, you know, like. And he sees, uses the N word. And, yeah. And, you know, like, he's pretty racist. Yeah. Um, so then what later we see when his father gets killed, he gets on camera with the news mm-hmm. and starts spouting a bunch of racist yeah. stuff because his dad was killed in a, a neighborhood that was mostly black. And I'm wondering, like, was his dad targeted because of his racist views? I doubt that the firemen are running around being like, hey, let me be racist. Was like, his dad just fighting a fire? Why, why, why are we thinking that it's so much was deeper? His, was his dad getting drugs? Uh, he, they said he was fighting a fire. Was his dad? Did his dad see a black person in there and then they try to kill him or whatever? Like, wow, you're going really dark. And then, so, and then the uh, one of the other black guys shot him because he was trying to kill. He was trying to leave the other black person there, like fuck him, let him burn. I figured it was just like a drive by that he got caught in or something because he's in a bad neighborhood. You I mean, you don't think like. He could have possibly been like, fuck him, let him burn. Why would he save a black person's life? This dude was super racist. I don't know. I didn't assume he was a fucking monster. Well, I don't know. He, did you see his eye? No. He looks weird. <laughs> what was wrong with his eye? I don't know. When he turned to, when he turned to look at his, to, to like side eye his, uh, his son there, his eye looked weird. I don't know. It looked hmm. like he has like a lazy eye or something. I don't know. Okay. I, I, I don't know. Anyway. But then when he did that on the news, when he went off on his racist rant, that's when he caught the attention of the skinhead leader in the area, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. So. And then the skinhead, like, he, he recruits him, and then he starts getting a bunch of people in there. He gets Ethan Supplee in there. Who? The guy from Mallrats, the big guy from okay, Mallrats. yeah. That played Willem. Yeah. Yeah, he uses him. That's how the the principal was anyway. He uses him to be like his yeah. his like right hand man who does all the crime, and he just sits there, kind of like a uh, Bundy, right? Not yeah. Bundy, is it Bundy? Bundy? The one who got the no, it's not Bundy. That was a serial killer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Who's the dude that Manson? Alone. He's like Manson. He's like a oh. neo-Nazi Manson. Okay, yeah. Well, Charles Manson is considered a serial killer too, but, but he didn't actually kill anybody. No. He just inspired people to do so, like this guy. Well, he, yeah, I mean, he more than inspired them to do so. Okay, he literally said, "Go kill them." Well, yeah, and so did this guy, I'm sure. But. And he got life, and well, he got the death penalty, which was then later commuted to life in prison when uh, the Supreme Court ruled that the electric chair was cruel and unusual punishment. But uh, he was convicted under the criminal conspiracy code. Uh, which states that any member of a criminal conspiracy is equally culpable to, of the actions for yeah, I'm not, any other member. I'm not trying to say the man's innocent. I'm just saying that he is puppeteering them. Yes, he is puppeteering them. And you can see, too, the relationship that he has with Edward Furlong. Like, there's mm-hmm. he's kind of like being a father figure 100%. because their father's out of the picture. Like, yeah. it makes it so much easier for him to get in there. Corey Math, or uh, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Matthews, but what what's his name? I don't know the actor's name. I can't. No, I know. I don't know the actor's name at all. But I can't remember uh, Alan. Alan Matthews. Yeah. <laughs> Alan. Racist Alan Matthews. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, what else? This movie is shocking. It like is there's shocking. just. I mean, it's it's just the entire time you're watching it. Just there's so many like. Horrible things. Oh, I that questioned. Happened. I questioned too. I was like, "Why does he get a prison sentence at all? Let alone such a long prison sentence?" Because of how he killed them. But we don't know that right away. Oh, when when we know that when we find out that he's going to prison. So this is what happens. He's having sex with the girl from the craft so loudly it's disgusting. Oh, for Ruzga or whatever. Yeah. I can't. I don't know her name. Uh, something like that. Balk? Or, I don't know. Anyway, uh, he's having sex with her, and two guys that he kicked off a basketball court by beating them at a game of basketball, because white men can jump everyone, <laughs> um, they come to steal his car. 
a car given to him by his father, Alan Matthews. Uh, and, and so he comes out and he shoots both of them. He grabs his gun and he shoots he shoots both of them. He kills there was three of them. No, there's two. He kills one instantly and then he wounds the other one. But he's not dead when the police are coming. So and then we cut and I'm like, why would he get why would he get jail for that? They were on his property. They were clearly breaking into his car. Why would he get like sent to jail? I mean the Well yeah, if they he call, stopped there maybe he wouldn't. They called it manslaughter. It wasn't murder. And I was like, sure, okay, I guess, you know, you could argue manslaughter, but like he was defending his property. That's not that's that shouldn't be that big of a deal, right? But then later <laughs> we learn that the guy that was injured he drags to the curb. Yeah. Uh fucking So tell, disturbing. Tells him to bite on the curb. And then stomps on the back of his head, killing him. Uh, and he does that part in view of the police coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and he also shot the one guy so many times. Like, if you're just trying to... Just like with the the police with Rodney King, you know, it's like excessive mm-hmm. force. If you're just trying to stop somebody, you don't shoot them five, six times. Right. Exactly. How many bullets did that fucking gun have? Because the other guys that 15. were there... Yeah drove away and he was shooting at their car as they were driving away. I love how you're like, there was only two. The, a car was driving away. Well, he killed two of them. Yes. I, don't, I don't remember a car driving away. He, there was. All right, well. I believe you. So. So there was one other guy in the car. At least. But he didn't get out. It was the getaway car. They did not get away. <laughs> no, it's a <laughs> Um... It's insane, though. Like, that's so disgusting and awful and violent. And, like, I well, felt yeah, so bad for that, this guy. And then it made sense. Because he's crying. And, like, he he knows what's going to happen. Like, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have bit the curb. I'd be like, no, fucking shoot me. Like, whatever. Like, there is no way in hell I would have bit the curb. Yeah. I mean, don't you think he knew what he was going to do? No. Don't you think you would have known what he was going to do? Probably, yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he knew what he was going to do. I don't know. Maybe he thought he would live. He obviously thought he could live from whatever was going to happen. But he did not. No. And then his brother wrote in his paper, like, the sound of the guy's head cracking yeah, was, nice. like, you know, in his dreams and stuff. Mm-hmm. And oh, he was so traumatized. Poor yeah. Kid. I mean, his poor brother fucking lost his dad at a young age, saw this horrifying event had his, like, hero taken away from him for four years. Three. Three years. Uh, You know, like, obviously, he had a lot of shit heaped on him. It's kind of insane. And, like, they they make this comparison in the prison, too. He gets three years for that. Mm -hmm. For, like, fucking murdering two people. Yeah. And the black guy that he becomes friends with is in for seven years. Yeah. Because he was stealing a TV, mm-hmm. and when the cops were arresting him, he accidentally dropped it on their foot when they grabbed his arm. So and assault. they said it was assault against the police officer. Yeah. What in the actual goddamn fuck? I mean, that's how it works. Mm-hmm. It's bullshit. But what I think is funny is that uh, what makes him turn non-racist is that the Nazis in the prison are ideologically inconsistent. <laughs> No. They're not racist enough, and he thinks that's bad. No. What makes him turn not racist is when they fucking rape him. No. No. He, like, he starts to... I know you want to talk about this a lot. Like, uh, you're just bite, you know, chomping at the bit to talk about this scene. It's it's male nudity. I know it's tantalizing <laughs> and no, everything. nothing about this scene is tantalizing. I know you're just, just itching to talk about it, but give it a second. So... Uh, the head Nazi dude in prison is, because obviously he hooks up with the Nazis. Right. But the head Nazi dude, in, and later he really hooks up with the Nazis. Uh, Disgusting. The, um, the head Nazi guy in prison is dealing drugs with, like, the Hispanic gang or whatever. And he's, like, he's giving it to blacks or something like that. He's, like, selling it to blacks. He's, he's working with Hispanics and blacks. And Edward Norton is, like, what the fuck... Like, pure blood, we can't, uh, 
mingle with their kind. This is bullshit. And he's pissed off. And he stops sitting with them. He doesn't want to be a Nazi anymore. And that's when he starts to talk to the black guy. I must have missed something. Because I thought... That's why they rape him, by the way. After he gets raped, he can barely walk and he goes and sits at a table by himself. Mm Mm-hmm. And then after that is when the the black guy he's friends with is like, what were you pulling in the lunchroom? What, you can't disrespect them like that. What are you thinking? No, yes. No, you're wrong. Yes. No, I'm not. He didn't sit with them before that. Okay. So that's what I must have missed then. Yes. Okay. When, where did he sit then? He sat by himself. So he sat by himself. Then they raped him. And then he sat by himself again. Yes. Like, like, like did, the, did they think that would make him want to come sit with them? No, it's punishment. Okay, I'm just saying, it seems like kind of stupid. <laughs> Why would it? Yeah, that- after the, he raped him, the guy that raped him uh, passed him a note that said, do you like me? Yes, no, maybe. No, but Will I Will you mean- sit and lunch with me now? The, the, the black guy seemed to think he should have sat with them still. Yes. Do you think that? Like, is, and that's what I'm saying. No. Was that their goal? Their goal in raping him was punishment. Okay. So I just, I don't understand why anybody would say, hey, you should still sit with them. That's all I'm saying. Like because I, you're wrong. And you, he said that before he got raped. He did not. He said no, because there were six of them and they jumped me and it won't happen again. That you, was his your, response. Your, your, your mixing up two different conversations. All right. If you say so, I don't think I am. Because then he says, look, you know, you got to fucking toe the line, is what he says after he gets raped. And he says something like, you know, they're not going to get me next time. I'll get them or whatever. And, like, that's when he says the six of them line. Before that, he's warning him. He's like, you know, the only reason you're alive is because of them. You know that, right? Like, what the fuck? Why are you doing this? Because they were protecting you. Yeah. Why are you, like, fucking disrespecting them by not sitting with them and all that shit? So if they were ideologically consistent, I think he'd still be nuts. You really think so? But then he allows himself to open up to other points of view. Because it basically, he says, like, it's, like, it's fucking bullshit. The Nazi shit, it's bullshit. They don't believe in the purity of the race like I do. <laughs> That's what he says. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> yes. What? Are you just planning on cutting parts of this out to make me look bad? <laughs> I'm diabolical. <laughs> but so that's the, like, that's what he's thinking. Yes. And then they fucking, you know, they get pissed off at him. And then in the, you know, <clears throat> the most passionate scene of the movie. They, the fuck is wrong with you? They flatten him against the, uh, the fucking whatever showers. And a guy that, you know, must be very big. Rapes it, him. It's so disturbing because then later. He's in the uh, clinic. Yeah. And the principal guy, this is I don't get. Like, I know he liked him as his teacher years mm-hmm. ago. Yeah. Did they stay friends? Like, how did he know to come now? Did, was That's he true. his emergency S- contact? Somebody called him. <laughs> you know? No, it was, it was <clears throat> in case of rape. <laughs> Call Andre Brower. That's what it was. Well, he was coming to talk to him about Danny. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. So, And then it just happened to be that, that it was that day, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But still, it's weird. And it's weird they let him back there. Yeah. The whole thing is weird. To look, to watch him get stitched up six times. Six stitches. That is more than most women get for an episiotomy. Yeah, it's no good. This poor man. <laughs> just, I feel so bad for him. Yeah. I mean, I know he's a terrible, horrible person, but in that moment, I feel bad for him. But he's he's getting better. Yeah, he's getting better, but he it's weird though to me that he comes out so radically changed. Yeah, they don't do a great job of justifying the amount of change that occurs in him. Cuz he comes back and the daughter's or the his sister, you know, is like uh yeah, you know, I'll I'll get a job or whatever. He's like, "No, you stay in school. You know, you're a smart kid. We we got to support you, you know, and like and all this stuff and everything." And all of a sudden he cares about her and like what she's doing and everything, and it's like, what the fuck? Well, I mean, okay, separate from the racism stuff, yeah, being taken away from his family for three years, and he refused to have visits and stuff, yeah, like that probably made him value them more. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. 
That's fair. Um, he certainly was not nice to her before. No. It's a far cry from uh, force feeding her. But the worst thing in the movie, aside from, you know, killing those men. And the rape. The worst thing he did in the movie oh, okay. was when they went into that grocery store. Yes. <clears throat> that was that was pretty disturbing, too. All, yeah, awful. Because they hire I- illegal immigrants. Yeah. Like, the guy who ran the grocery store retired and sold his business to a Korean guy. Yep. And he's so upset that... The, the, and the Korean guy's using illegal immigrants. Yeah. He's so upset about all of that that they go in and just terrorize these people. Well, they do more than terrorize. Like, I mean, they yeah, they beat they, the fuck out of them. They, like... they. Like they severely beat everyone that works there. They're force feeding this poor woman who's pissing herself and crying and stuff. There's a stain on like on her pants mm-hmm. and everything. I mean, obviously it's acting, and uh, I'm sure like that's. I'm not sure. That's one of those things that um that they they put on like they they did that on purpose. The wardrobe department or whatever. That you're you're shrugging like they fucking let an actress. Piss herself on stage, like or on and the and, you know on the fucking set, like that actually happened. It's acting, Carol. They were pouring all that stuff in her face so, for real. So she would have been. I don't know that that was for real, and she would have been a stunt performer underneath there with like safety precautions, stuff like that. Someone that's that is ready to deal with this stuff. All right, but anyway. Uh, but in the guise of the movie, it's horrifying. Yes, obviously. it's awful to watch. It's awful to watch. Like it's so funny to hear them talk about <clears throat> this too, because they're all like, uh, you know, "These fucking Mexicans are coming here and they're stealing your jobs." Anyone want to work at that fucking grocery store? Uh, they're they're stealing your jobs and 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 you know, like uh, they're they're taking your way of life and everything. This this low paying <laughs> minimum wage job, and it's like. It's what every, like, bully organization, whether it's the Nazis or whatever, what you know, any, like, because essentially what it is is, like, a cult of personality. It's a cult centered around Edward Norton's character because he has the charismatic personality, right? So any one of those, the playbook's very simple. Yeah. Pick a group. In this case, it's it's Mexicans. Illegal immigration isn't even an actual problem in the country. Like, if you look at net immigration, it's close to zero. And, and it's just, it's not even a real issue. It's an issue that gets brought up just because it's divisive for people. And it doesn't even really matter. Sorry to get political, everyone. But, uh, so, you take a group and it's like, oh, Mexicans, in, in this case. Well, Mexicans, you know, they're coming in here. They're stealing your job. They're committing crimes. They're racist. You know, they're rapists. They're terrible. So they they pick a group and demonize that group and say, hey, all of them in a monolith, all of them are awful. And you know all the problems you have in your life? You know how, like, you don't have enough money. You know how you don't have, like, enough time to spend with your kids. You know how, like, your wife gets on your nerves. You know how, like, you don't fucking... Like, all those issues, all those problems, it's their fault. So we should hate them. You know, it's just, say it's the exact same thing that, that Hitler did with Jewish people. Yeah. You know all the problems you're having, Germans? Jews. It's their fault, right? It's the exact same fucking battle plan. And then they they foment all this hate, and it's like you should hate all these people, and and then they just let them loose, and that's the fucking chaos that ensues. It's disgusting. It's a tale as old as time, uh, and I'm not talking about a uh, man turned into a candlestick. <laughs> so <clears throat> we talked about the couple of problems that I had with the movie. Did yeah. you have any problems with the movie? Um. My biggest problem is the rapidity rapidity of his change. Yeah, like like it's a very and the thing is is it's it's so complete. Like he was raised this way, then his father was killed by a black person, and and then he was taken in by this horrible racist, and his his hatred grew and grew and grew. And it's you know it's one of those situations where it's like the guy was obviously very intelligent. 
And being intelligent doesn't mean that you're going to be right Right. at all. Like, you know, you can use your intellect to be completely wrong because he's wrong about pretty much everything he says in the movie. Um, But he says it in such a convincing and charismatic way, you know. Uh, So he he goes to that extreme. And then in three years in prison, by the time he comes out, he's like to the black guy. I mean, just talking about the Lakers every day. Like, that's all that, that really happens, basically. But he says, he's like, I have a feeling that the only reason I, I came out of their lives because of you or whatever, because of the strings you pulled. And, and he's like, yeah, you know. He's like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. That's yeah. what I thought, you know. And, and, and so, like, I get all that stuff. And I get the lesson of, hey, one way to stop racism and prejudice is to expose people to other groups of people. That's the whole point in the affirmative action stuff when it comes to like college and everything is like we want to we want to promote in a, a diverse environment so that you're exposed to different kinds of people instead of just being exposed to the same kind of person you are throughout your entire life. We want you exposed to other cultures, other way of thinking because that's how you grow as a person. Yeah. And that's that's the the surest way to defeat Racism is to have friends who are black and hear things from their point of view and and you know have a little more empathy and see things more from their point of view and and then they don't seem so scary or like the other or whatever because you have them in your life and you're used to them you know like all different kinds of races and cultures and creeds and stuff like that that's I so I get that the, that's kind of the movie's message, but it seems like a lot. He comes back, like, vehemently against racism. Well, again, though, don't forget. I mean, I know you think that I'm maybe harping on this too much, but, I mean, he was brutally raped by his neo-Nazi brethren. Yes. And that's going to have an effect on how he feels about them. I guess, yeah. So I, I think the, to me, I think the crux of it is, like I said, is where he's, like, they're ideologically inconsistent. And as he sees that, he's like, he's smart enough to see like, oh, they're, they don't care. They don't, they don't really think that whites are superior or maybe they kind of do, but like, they don't really care. Like they don't, they don't believe any of this shit. This is like acting to them. Like the, the Nazi flag and stuff like that on like tattooed on them is just like, it's like for show. You know what I mean? Like, not like they're like, oh, you know, we're all brothers and something like in a hug or whatever. He's like, but they don't really care. If they did, they wouldn't have anything to do with black people or Hispanic people. But they don't really believe this. And then he thought about the guy, like the main guy that, that turned him, the main not neo-Nazi guy. Uh-huh. And he's like, he th- probably thought about conversations he had with him and everything. And he was like, fuck he doesn't really believe this shit either, like, like fully. He's like, you know, and he's like, because when he goes back to, to see the Nazis and everything, he's like, he tries to explain to his old girlfriend and everything, he's like, it's all bullshit. This is all bullshit. Mm-hmm. It's like, because he realizes it's all about power. It's all about getting a bunch of people together and having control over them. That's all this guy cares about. He doesn't fucking care about, you know, uh, Every, like the white race should rule or whatever. Like, I mean, like that's the tool he's using, but he cares about the power and shit. I, I, I thought it was weird how excited she was to see him and how quickly she decided she hated him. Oh, because he's not racist anymore. But I mean, it's like, is that all they had? Yeah. <laughs> Cause that was the one thing they had in common. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it wasn't just like, Oh gosh, I guess I don't like you anymore. It was a, let's, kill you now yeah it's like if garfield and normal didn't love lasagna both or whatever is that, <laughs> is that, was normal his girlfriend i don't remember no uh lucille i think i don't oh, know okay i remember heathcliff normal was just normal was just a really super cute kitten okay yeah. heathcliff heathcliff he's a you know you don't know, remember heathcliff no i was the best sorry better i than, was a garfield girl better than garfield sorry anyway so I think that's it. I kind of feel like that's it too. I think I think we said it all. Um, fantastic movie. 
Very well done. Very well done. I mean, despite the, the complaints, I would definitely say you should see it. Great acting. Uh, Edward Norton certainly got jacked for this role, by the way. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> were, you, were you feeling him? Maybe. <laughs> even though he was being a neo-Nazi, huh? Even with the swastika. Well, okay, on I, wouldn't, chest. I wouldn't want to date him. No. <laughs> Just saying. You yes, he, he did get jacked for the movie. You weren't you weren't jealous of uh, of Feruzga No, when... God, I thought he was killing her. <laughs> that was some violence. That sex. was like not good. <laughs> that was movie violence. Yeah. sex. No one really has sex like that. Even no, like... that's not true. Our neighbors in that apartment, I think they had sex like that. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I thought they were going to come through the fucking wall. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how anyone can stand that kind of pounding. Because you can, I mean, you can, you know, you can get passionate and, like, fast and shit like that. Yes. But not like he was, like, he was, like, yeah. He Well, that this was, was the same day that he had the fight with uh, the teacher dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had a lot of aggression, I think, he was taking out on her. Yeah, taking it out of her vagina. And then, you I know, hope. later on, the, the black men trying to steal his I hope truck. it was his vagina. God. Oh, my God. Why, why do you got to go there? Just say it. <laughs> oh. Maybe it was karma, Carol. Maybe. Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe she sent them. <laughs> maybe that's why she told them to go to hell. <laughs> anyway, that is the uh, the episode, Carol. Why don't you tell people where they can go? So you can write us at latefee1994 at AOL.com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Yep. And share the tapes with your friends. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.